The tomb of Si Fin stands on top of a 650 metre high hill in West Wicklow. It appears to be part of a series of tombs, as a number of other peaks in the area, like Si Finnegan and Si Han, also have similar large stone cairns covering their passage tombs. These are found in most regions of Ireland, but are more prevalent in the northern half of the island. The usage period of passage tombs date from around 3750 BC to about 2500 BC, the late Stone Age, or otherwise known as the Neolithic period. The Neolithic period is an era when people began to farm the land rather than being nomadic hunter-gatherers. The tomb is a large stone cairn, measuring around 26 metres in diameter and about 3 metres high. You can see a number of large curb stones around the base of the tomb, defining its outer edge. There are two decorated stones just inside the entrance, a feature of most tombs in Eastern Ireland. So the tomb uh, is entered by a 10 meter passageway into this corbelled chamber, which has five compartments that were primarily used for grave goods. Um, cremated bodies um, were generally put into these compartments, usually of people of high status. Unfortunately, this chamber has collapsed over the centuries and now <clears throat> it's open to the elements. Burials in Irish passage tombs tend to be accompanied by a limited and distinctive range of objects. These grave goods include pins fashioned from bone or red deer antler, carved and polished stone pendants, and occasionally distinctive pottery. Ireland's best known passage tomb is in County Meath, the mighty Newgrange, which has an association with a solar cult after a light box was discovered during excavation in 1968 and this has been aligned to cast light into the tomb during the winter solstice. When first noticed, the beam of light lasted 17 minutes, a powerful way of showing the dead inside the light to come of the new spring ahead. One feature of Irish passage tombs that distinguishes them from other monumental types of the Neolithic era is the longevity of the tradition. They appear to be in use for well over a millennium, in contrast to other monument types associated with the early Neolithic, such as court tombs or portal dolmens. It is said that there were so many trees in Ireland at this time that a squirrel could travel from Malinhead at the tip of Ireland to Mizzenhead in the south without ever touching the ground. To create this new farmland, trees had to be cut down and experimental archaeologists have discovered that a highly polished stone axe head could cut down a small birch tree in just under 15 minutes. The new land liberated from the forests would go on to provide pasture for livestock and allow them grow crops of barley and wheat. They would have farmed the land until its fertility was lost and then moved on to find new ground. The views from here are quite spectacular. Over there is South County Dublin. Over here, West Wicklow runs into the plains of Kildare. All those well-ordered fields below, still being farmed thousands of years later. Gathering all these stones, rocks and boulders would have been an incredibly difficult undertaking in the Neolithic period. It is almost like those who constructed the graves wanted to claim ownership of all they could see that by placing their ancestors far above the lands of the living, the dead could watch over them from above. But who was buried here? The tomb was excavated by R. A. McAllister in 1932. However, he reported finding no artefacts, and stranger still, no human remains in the tomb. Perhaps the remains had been removed by the descendants of the tribe if they moved to farm another area. It is possible that over the millennia, the grave had been desecrated with all traces of those interred, removed and destroyed. Only C. Finn knows the full truth. 
So many of these passage tombs have an association with some of the myths and legends of Ireland. One is that they were associated with a tribe called the Tua de Danin, the tribe of goddess Danu. And this tribe had a great rivalry with another tribe called the Milesians. And both tribes met in County Meath at the Battle of Talcha. And the following account is given by a writer from the 1920s called Seamus McManus. When they had joined their forces in Meath, they went against the Dedanon in the general battle at Talcha and routed the latter with great slaughter. Three kings and the three queens of the Dedanon were slain and many of them killed and the remainder dispersed. The survivors fled into the remote hills and into the caves. Possibly the glimpses of some of these fugitive hill dwellers and cave dwellers caught in twilight and in moonlight by succeeding generations of Milesians, coupled with the seemingly magical skill which they exercised, gave foundation for the latter stories of enchanted folk, fairies, living under the Irish hills. Though a quaint tale preserved in the ancient Book of Leinster says that after Talcia, it was left to Amergen, the Milesian poet and judge, to divide Aaron between the two races, and he shrewdly, so with technical justice, giving all above ground to his own people, and all underground to the Daedanum. He continues, most conquerors come to despise the conquered, but here they came to honour, almost to worship those whom they had subdued, which proves not only greatness in the conquered, but also bigness of mind and distinctiveness of character in the conquerors. The Dedanon skill in the arts and crafts in course of time immortalized itself in beautiful legends among the Milesians. After this, Tua Dedanon dwell in this other world, but sometimes interact with humans and the human world. They are associated with ancient passage tombs which were seen as portals to the other world. Thank you for watching, but please like and subscribe, as this will encourage future productions.